bay here. Uh, Manok was close by, so they are playing a little bit safe. You saw a couple of their allies didn't have uh, too many weapons, pulling out the pistol there, not, not the weapon they want to be working with. And that takes it away from his ally. He's got the submachine gun, swaps it around for a rifle. Currently a little bit split out. We do see Zeng Manuk has pushed down further south along Ras Bay. Well, he can see that better that position with the more central side of the map in exchange for a little bit more safety. And Manuk are a team who have a pretty good kill score, a pretty good kill score yep. as well as pretty good positional point uh, standing right now. 395, they stand in a very solid second place, and this could translate to an even better score towards the end of the third game if they manage to make an exceptional play coming into this round. I mean, remember that in the last few rounds for Manuk, uh, they got picked off very early into round one, which is quite unfortunate. Right. Um, then round two, they really showed what they could do. Nice pass. Got that over by going. Yeah, it was a very interesting... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, in round two, they got more frags. Uh, they were able to actually perform a little bit better. And that actually propelled them ahead. Now they need to keep that up because they're just on the cuffs of qualifying, but they need a round two performance, not a round one performance. Yeah, the round one really did not net them very many points at all. So going into this third, third game, they really have to perform a little bit better, especially with a bunch of other teams who are right on their tails looking to try and turn things around, steal away that, that second place position. And also, you do have uh, the possibility of them pushing in for first place if they manage to outperform other teams like EXP here. So looking to see if they can manage to get that first place, hold the first place and hold that position down as they move into the next stages, next stage of games because week three to seven of the the SEA regional clash are very much different because you constantly have the same teams playing out for the next four weeks. Yes. I mean the top four teams from this uh, from each division in advance. So this is one of the Indonesian groups. <laughs> Stop it! You're giving away your position by hitting the horn. But it did get everyone in the car, so... Uh, if, it it were, if it works. It works. Yeah, that was a horn filled with passion. That's where, you know, you're, you're holding onto your phone, uh, your teammates are all looting, you're in the car waiting, and you just turn to your left. And then you see your allies browsing through Facebook, just scrolling through his timeline, you know, not getting into the car, he thinks already in the seat. And, you know, you can do one of two things. I like his route, he hits the horn, and he's like, oh crap, get off Facebook, get back into the survival, let's go, jump in the car. I would have just turned around and smacked him across the head and said, what are you doing? <laughs> get in the car! We're in a tournament! Well, you can't help it, Facebook gaming has so many good streams to watch. Get off Farmville and start playing this match, we're in a bloody competition. You gotta do what you gotta do. You gotta watch out for the enemy. Watch out for how they played in the previous matches. But here we are, moving in. This is a very nice start the match. Only four, two, uh, sorry, 52 people still left. And, uh, yeah, five deaths in the first six minutes. Death is pretty uncharacteristic. Quiet for guys. Southeast Asia. <laughs> it's very quiet for Southeast North Asia. North America, we still have 60 people left. Uh, <laughs> three people who have joined in the game there since we, we started out. <laughs> <laughs> just have another plane come over. It's not going to be a crate drop. It's just people parachuting like, woo! So we heard we need more people. Reinforcements have arrived. Go in and pad up the numbers, but over in this game, we are watching oh. for a Get little bit, in. little bit more action. Hopefully, coming in for these players as we move into the third set of games. Things are getting a little bit more heated with the stakes rising off of this. Very close within the top six position. A lot of these teams could overtake one another. Uh, seems like we have had people very spread out here. I'm curious to see the map later on because it doesn't seem like there are any early skirmishes, but I've jinxed it. Jumped over the car. No, he oh. didn't. Knocked out. That's the first elimination. Juice with a nice kill coming in with the vehicle. Looking at trying to end things off a little bit more, but then we jump over to Bengal, watching them over the top side of the map over by Observatory. Now looking to rotate over, possibly looking to try and pick up the teammate here. Well, a little bit stutter, not too much of an issue. Some of the players already dropping out of the vehicle now, looking to rotate back around. Very, right. in, yeah, it's a very seems like a very interesting start yeah. to the game. I mean, Look, we I, haven't seen things go the way that you should go. I already jinxed it. I said that there was not going to be any early skirmishes. And as soon as I say that, one team gets eliminated from the competition. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of how. Uh, and right as I say it again, whoa! 
Beagle was a Beagle, but oh my goodness, Beagle! What a disaster! Losing out in that battle right on the get go. They charged in with the cavalry. Lance versus Lance is a joust of the battle, but they still go down. They had the truck, the XP had the truck, and they're the ones to get the ramp battle going. Unfortunately, Bengal gonna get eliminated very early into the competition. I, I think with that early elimination, they won't be able to qualify for the next round. But for EXP, that's four extra kills, and they're already top of the table. If that was a joust, the sports car was a was a mule, and the truck was a peg was like a Pegasus. <laughs> you could have just you could have gone with mule and stallion or donkey and stallion, but you had to bring in the Pegasus. I had to bring in the Pegasus. I bring yeah, that's that that's the level that's the difference coming in. The one of the cars actually was not even in play. He they they put them so far out of play, they couldn't even fire back. <laughs> we just checked it on the map. Uh, very spread out positions for all the squads here. Uh, so no one's really going for these early fights. Seems like a lot of the teams that were uh, not performing super well in the first few rounds have decided not to take the aggressive route. Instead of playing a little bit safer, waiting for the last few circles before they make their positional push. I'm trying to see if that's going to be enough to pick up the remaining points that they need to qualify for the next stage of the tournament. Um, but I'm not sure whether or not this is the strategy that they want to employ because so far it looks like they've been doing the same thing over and over again. They've been playing safe, they've been holding opposition, they move over, they get caught out somewhere. I don't think that's how it needs to work. I think they need to, sh to change things up entirely, go super aggressive, try and look for these early engages, and try and pick up a couple of kills. Right. That's and dominate the area. That's for some of the teams that are, I believe that be lower down. But uh, you saw Elite Eight again yeah. setting up shot very early on with the, the minimal gear that they need to pick a fine rotate it to the center of play zone two and set up shop there. So they shouldn't have to move around or change position anytime soon. We'll have the advantage of knowing when people arrive towards their compound to show up for these fights. Um, so I like that they're sticking to their strategy because they are currently top four. They have the top four position, so they just have to be consistent in this last match. And if they drop early, like we saw Bengal drop so early, that's not good. Like Bengal have to take the risk because they're not qualified yet. Uh, they have to make that risky play in order to get into the top few. And it's actually beneficial right. to the top four teams that EXP are the ones that are getting these kills. Um, you don't want a team that's fifth, sixth, or seventh place to be eliminating the lower squads because if that happens, now the points they pick up are going to matter. It's going to actually allow them to potentially leapfrog into the top four finish and actually overtake you in your qualifying spots. True. But because it's EXP that's picking up uh, the kills so far, it's actually beneficial because they're currently number one. If they do place as number one at the end of the tournament, then all the kills and the frags they picked up basically are washed. They don't really matter too much. Uh, then the next three teams, it's all up for them to hold on to their three spots. AL is another team that's fighting to get into the top four. They've had a very curious run. Uh, game one, they got knocked out very early, but healed up and went outside the play zone to third place. Sorry, second place finish. And then the second match, dragged out of their minds, but finished sixth, I believe it was. Kinda. Kinda, yeah. So they got like 11 kills, I think. It yeah, was, uh, so. Insane. Well, I think it was fourth. They came in fourth and they got 11 kills, so uh, AL coming in with a very strong second game. I think first game was actually, um, I think it was actually Jerry. Oh, it's Jeff Pro. Oh, yeah, Pro Jeff Pro. Hold on to second yeah, place. So, All right. Yeah, so Elite eight. That, that changes up uh, things quite a decent amount. So AL are actually not in the best position. So as you mentioned, they are on that fight. They're struggling, trying to paddle their way up, egg feeder their way up, trying to get a gasp of air as they move into the next, this third game. Things Keeping things slow, they take a couple of shots, but they're just going to brush it off, move along with the vehicle, try and find a better position within this play zone. Changing their strategy, right? First match, uh, they picked some early fights, lost two members right away which meant that the last two just had to take the play zone and try and survive, essentially. Uh, game two was where they had the huge compound fights. Uh, and that's where they just held up the compound and let people drive up to them, got the kills here and there, which is good for them. Now in game three, playing a bit more safe, but a big skirmish. Pushing in, Lux looking for his kill, but over by the side, gets knocked down, and over the rest of his team get wiped out, and what a clean play coming in from this side of, this side of the team. That's back. 
King Borneo, we saw him make a big highlight play early in the tournament. They've got to oh, do a lot true. more. They have to do a lot more if they want to qualify. They're not sitting too pretty in the rankings, but we've seen what they can do individually as well as when they do work as a team. Um, they're reminding me of Washed Up a little bit from North America in the sense that they've been consistent in their strategy and they know that if they stick to their guns, it will work because they are a good team. However, in this tournament, quite frankly, they've been fairly unlucky when it comes to their plays. They've been dropped into a couple of spots where they've been pincered. They try to fight their way out. They get enough frags to look decent and, you know, stay middle of the table. Um, but every single time getting picked off as soon as they get those first few firefights and can't really make it into the top four or five where they can really shine. Hopefully in this match, if they have to pick things up and keep getting the frags like they have been, they could try and fight for a top four spot, but it's rather difficult for them at the moment. We're talking about a team that's consistently played on strategy. The X team still hovering around with this split chain of our command. One player is still far up north, right by Observatory, and the rest of the team now trying to move into the play zone. Looking to get that early position. As you mentioned, it's already so difficult for teams who are at the bottom, middle of the pack. That's right. Trying to go aggressive, picking up a couple of kills, and even for them, it's incredibly difficult to find the way back in the top four position. For a team like the X, they have been constantly looking to try and make it into the top few positions but they get zero kills in the process end up maybe top five and with that being, with that happening they don't accumulate that many points and again very quiet in this third match uh, teams are playing a bit more safe you can see ale on your screen now they've moved into the next play zone they're kind of spread out on foot we're not seeing too much of the truck strategy that we saw from north america it's mostly being about using vehicles to get into the play zone and then working your way on foot afterwards. So I'm really excited for uh, the World Championship because then we'll get to see the clash of the Southeast Asian and American playstyles, as well as you know, teams from Europe and China. But even in Southeast Asia alone, when we go into the regional clash, which is starting next week, we can see teams like Indonesia play against the Philippines or play against Thailand or the other regions qualifying from Southeast Asia. And the minute differences in strategies can start to take effect. I really like the way that uh, it's structured because you get to see three different regions play all at oh. once and over by the side. Aura now looking for a little bit of a fight. End up losing one DXP. member over coming in. They're pushing in EXP. Now looking for a little bit more action off their own. They jump in, join into the battle. Now pushing in. Aura gonna find themselves in a difficult position as they get pushed in. But EXP drop member after member. Oh my goodness. Vex gonna try and roll up to this fight. It capitalize on two teams going for a big flank. Pushing in now. Last member on the site on the top floor. Aura gets taken down. And a great takeaway off of this battle, just instantly cleaning up this fight. I mean, this is great. We talked about King Borneo earlier on and his big highlight plays when he was playing earlier today. Remember, he was the player who unfortunately, after his team got taken down very early into the match, he almost came out clutch against AL and almost pulled off a one on four. Now he's being rewarded for his play style. They have to be placing middle of the pack. But essentially, they just wiped two squads after they wiped another squad. Yeah, so Vector's in a very good position right now. Hopefully, if they come in first, we might actually be able to see a bit of an upset. Still got a long way to go. They still have to try and make that first place finish, and we expect them to try and pick up more frags because yes. they've got 12. They're going to be saying that's not enough. They, they need to do this. They hit the 20s. Yeah. They need to hit 20s like we saw from Washed Up in North America. That final push from Washed Up was amazing. Because they were unlucky throughout the best of five we saw earlier today. And in the final match, luck was on their side. They got an early fight, one, and then send the circle at the start of the match, and then dragged down. They hunted down every single team that was in there. Now looking at the at a potential turnaround for for the rest of themselves. Vector is setting themselves up for a great comeback story. The underdogs moving in after the first, um, first two rounds are now becoming a very real threat in the eyes of the top tier teams. Still very quiet, still not as much action as we saw in the first two matches. Reasonably so, you still see teams works. like EX. EX. What are you doing over there? They're still waiting out. Still trying to hide inside the boom zone, let all of these other teams find. Same strategy they've been performing all game. Mm -hmm. 
every game, all game, every game they now. They get the circle as well for their member that's actually inside the play zone, but look at Elite 8. Elite 8 have done this consistently, which is moved into the play zone very early into the match. Get the center as soon as possible. Avoid conflicts very early on and rely on position to pick up those points. Honestly, it feels a little bit like luck. They get such a solid position, especially when they've already looted up to a point where they are capable of fighting against and holding their own against any other team that makes their way over. So it feels a little bit lucky that they've managed to get the zone right on top of their faces once again. Now, looks like Vector is going to make their way into the playing zone, looking forward. Kills. They've got seven amongst three of their players. Would love to see what the final member have. has. I believe it's one, so that's eight kills for Vectors. Making their way over eight kills. They want to pad things up even more, trying to move around the perimeter of the map. Yep, eight kills confirmed. Looking to see that's an opportunity for anything else in this game for them to pick up. So we want to see them, you know, eliminate at least one more squad and make it to the top, uh, sorry, the last battle, pick up two more frags there. That could propel them to a top four finish. And that's all that matters right now. This could be there the squad go. they're looking for, trying to see each just compound. They spot the vehicle, they move down past the ridge line, opting to find a better position before making any decisions or any calls. And for you guys back at home wondering how we decide which teams move on to the next stage of qualifiers, you know, from week 3 to week 7, top 4 teams from this qualifiers make it to the, to, um, into the next group. And one more uh, team from the previous set of qualifiers, the uh, ROSC Bangkok uh, qualifiers, will have the top 1 team from that region continue on. So we'll have 5 teams in total from each region. Rewarding a bit more consistency, not just in the actual tournament, but in general competitive gameplay, right? If you're, if you're number one in your region, rewarding that gameplay, rewarding that you've participated in the tournament and played so well in them, giving you that advantage of not falling into the trap of qualifiers from time to time. 20 minutes in though, Grainer, we've got 10 minutes left on this map and 10 minutes to decide who the top four are going to be. AL, four members strong, but all eyes are currently on vectors. We're rolling up, AL on, on foot at the moment. This could be a big fight. For this opportunity, a couple of shots coming in to get the first knocked out, and Vector is losing members left and right. End up having to back off it. That's oh my not goodness. good. AL with a great position now, looking to find the execute kills. With eight kills in their name, they want a little bit more if they want to secure the position into this game. But this, they've decided that it's not worth the effort. But they walk away from AL and into the arms of EA, who have now held down on this position. They're trying to get into the compound. They see the car. They still get out, and they go for the breach. Two on four against Elite Eight. Start driving in, start moving out, looking at Team Bonio moving into the house by himself. They're trying to jump into the second floor off the building. Team Bonio now pushing in, not sure he's if he done spots it before. out. He's done a one on four before, now he's got a backup. Let's see what Team Bonio can do. E8 now holding on to a safe position, not looking to give away his spot just yet. But should the rest of the. the but we should see Vector is finding out a little bit off the enemy's position, off of the, the open doors. Chicken Grenade coming in, but the closed door will deny that and that engage. Pushing things forward, looking to move in. King Bonio finds the first engage, looking at a knockdown. That's now, one! Looking at a second, Gray goes around the corner, tries to hold out that position. Oh, he, he got the kill! The, he finds the confirmation, pushing things in, and another Chicken Grenade gets a knockdown onto Gray. You've got to be kidding me! King Borneo in the second match. One on four, gets three kills, finally goes down against AL. Now he gets Elite Eight, one of the best from their qualifying groups. And he's killed two in a two on four breach. They need to get rid of E8 early on. E8 are one of their direct competitors, keeping them away from that top four position. If they can get rid of E8, they have a great chance of pushing forward into the next set of qualifiers. Moving up now, one by one. King Borneo backs off a little bit as they try to push up through this third floor. On both sides, enemies holding oh, down their him. position. He Look, sees him. Third, pers third person perspective holding firecracker. down. Firecracker. things out. Oh, there's in. a firecracker! Got him! You gotta be kidding me! There's one member left from Elite Eight! That's absolutely insane! Finding the knockdown so quickly, dodges out with the chicken grenade. Now they're pushing forward. Looking at the last one of EA, EA might have already bailed, but no, still holding Jeff down. Jeff Pro, Jeff Pro trying to hold this one down for EA. They spot him out, he tries to jump out the window. Don't have this, they don't have the perimeter secure, so they're unable to find an execution kill. Knock Hunter very low. He's dying here. Jeff Pro trying to ride that vehicle is on fire, but he's gonna be able to escape still. I can't believe that. Two on four breach. Elite Eight, one of the best in the competition. And they've been knocked down to Jeff Pro for the second time in this best of three.
Where have Vectors been the past two games? Have we been watching the same team playing out? I have to say Vectors got very unlucky in their match when they got breached by AL because AL did the Lizard Tail strategy when they drove around the compound. Uh, Vectors did a very good job. They actually knocked down one of the members, but they dropped off two of them just behind the hill and then drove to the northern side of the compound. That's where we saw the big grenade play coming out. Throwing a grenade, knocking down two members of Vectors, and King Borneo had to come out clutch, and he almost did. Three knockdowns, he got the final member down to a few hit points. We see another skirmish here. King now looking for a couple of quick kills. Moving over by the side, he gets dropped, and now the rest of the team falling soon after. One by one, the rest of the team getting taken out in Esmat. Already falling, and they're trying to get more and more, get every single frag as possible, but they're in the green zone. Magic need to push back out. They just won the fight. They know that there is one person left. One man holding inside the shrubbery, inside the bush. Just using the third person perspective. Look at the health bars taking down so fast for Magic. They need to push oh, out. They spot him! Team RI dropped out of competition and a tragic hold. Moving just a heal. That anim the heal animation drew the attention away from the enemy team. Magic found him out. Pump of that small movement. He can oh, Jeff Rohr, he's been caught! Holding this down, X. EX tries to push in, but is unable to find the kill, and Ansem getting taken down. Where's the rest of his team? G Force is going to fall, Cool is in a different building. He checked the bathroom, and Sneaky Jeff Rohr was waiting for him. Gets another pick for Elite 8, at least get more points. Jeff Rohr is going to try and do what he did in game one, which is sneak in for a top three finish. And he's going to pray that that's enough. If, if Elite 8 qualify for the next series, it's going to be off the back of Jeff Pro. Yeah, Jeff Pro deserves a big slice of that cake. The lion's share as he tries to hold down the, the dreams of his team moving forward. A couple of the team, these teams still left alive. 14 players, 24 minutes in the game. All eyes on Vectors because remember Vectors, they were half the point of Elite 8 coming into this qualifier. It must feel good to get revenge. Whoa! For what the heck? Forgive me! Instantly down with the shotgun right into the face. Now pushing down, pushing down. The he manages to find the execute kill. Looking for the reload first. Making the rotation around. The rest of his team still alive. He has one of his teammates knocked down. Zayel going for the big breach, going for the big fights. WAF pushing in, looking for this knockdown onto the enemy. Jumps around, but he's surrounded on all sides. Looking for the turnaround onto the kills, but he gets surrounded. He's trying. He's got oh to. my goodness! Turns what? around. What are you doing? That is insane. Finds off two, now two more, waiting outside, but it's unable to finish things off. Forgive Looks for the me. execute kills, but it's unable to do so. They crawl into the room. Forgive me again. AL come out clutch, forgive me, finds the first opening pick, gets the immediate kill, and turns around what was about to be a one on three. Magic now looking for a fight. Last couple of players left on this game, and they just looking at, to clean things up. Law of damage down onto Magic, they lose one. Now pushing over on the side, they're trying Vectors. to find the place back. Vectors might be able to do it here, Grandin. They need these kills if they want to find themselves back into the game. AL over by the side, and this is a lot of noise being generated on both ends. AL outside the play zone, but they've got four members strong, able to pick everyone up. Vectors with two, Magic with a few wounded players here. Pushing forward, just a lead a little bit Molly. more. Molotov coming into the He's on fire! Well, Jack jumps behind the vehicle, gets a little bit of cover. Look at King Born here, finally inside the house. Knows that he can just survive a little bit longer. That might be enough for Vectors, they fragged out. Borneo gets spotted out right by the door. That's the deal, but he needs to move. Grenades will be coming into that location. Moves up front. Good positioning from King Borneo. Spots it out. Notices that the immediate threat. He could see himself getting taken down by grenades. So moves forward. Looks for the heal right now. Looking to try and reset. He's almost back to full out, but he gets knocked down. That's going to be King Borneo going down. That was the star player for them. They have one player of Vectors left outside. What a jump! Gets it! Takes down the last member of Magic, and now, unfortunately for him, it's one on one with four members of AO left standing as well. Not the best situation for Vectors. <laughs> not, not good at all. AO still holding four players. And they're inside the zone too. Whew. Times are tough. Times are tough for Vector. They've come this far, and this is. What they need to come in, they, he can't afford to go in just yet. Six yes. players left. That means there's one guy. Yeah, where's the last sneaky man? Jeff Pro? Is if it gonna be Jeff Pro? If it's EX <laughs> team, if it's EX team. Well, where the heck are they? We've got six players, right? So AL. Oh, you've got to be kidding me! It it EX cool. He's a four kilometer away from the play zone. 
this is exactly what EX team have been doing every single game. They flopped in second once, they flopped in fifth once, and this time if he manages to, uh, to out survive Vector, he will clock in se uh, second once again. So looking just one second though, because that's an extra 25 points. Absolutely. We just need to get them knocked down. Don't think so. Uh, AL okay. The smoke grenade is being thrown down, so Vectors might have done something good here. Now just trying to hide inside the green zone. Oh, I think no. he, I think Vectors are, Vectors are feeling like, okay. There's four of them there. Maybe it's a two on two or something. But now he realizes that everyone's just throwing grenades his way, hoping that the last play is going to play spoiler. Unfortunately for him, EX Cool is just healing in the play zone. Vectors going to do Ooh. the exact same thing. The green zone is actually collapsing in. So there's going to be no safe area in just a second. Down to who will have the most meds. AL should have that. Vector's just healing up outside the play zone. Just saying, you know what? I'm not going to take the risky strategy. Good old Cool. EX now in a battle against Vector to see who has the oh, He's only got Cool's going to oh, die. Oh, that three, there we go. Losing out in that final moment. EX unable to find themselves a better position. Coming in third. Now Vector just have to go. He just has to try and go in. He's only got Bands just left as well. Just get in the vehicle. Last ditch effort. Just push in and look for that final entrance. Drive around. Hope for the best. Not going to happen here today, Grant. They're just sitting back. They're healing up. Look at him go. But it's way too late. Look at the damage. Even with the heal. Oh, let's go, boys. Dodge him, cars. Mess losing out on that Woo! final moment. Pushes in. Get the first knockdown. But he jumps out of the vehicle. Not sure he wanted to do that. And finds he tried. a second.